Yeah. Appreciate you, man. Yes, we do. We're going to be in Ephesians chapter 5. Thank you, Lord. Um, God is awesome because, you know, I, I, was, uh, I was praying, I spent some time with him, and um, last few days he's had me just been, I've been reading through Ephesians, and there's, there's a perspective that we can have if we'll allow God to give it to us. And it's not about uh, stuff and things or the situations and the circumstances, but it's that ability that gives us to mount up on wings like eagles, to, to see the, the, the forest and not just our tree, uh, to be able to see the blessings that are around us. A um, couple, couple weeks ago, we, or last week, we got to go to North Bend, and when Jeremy's talking about tunnel vision, I don't know if you've been on those trails, but it's pretty neat, you know, you're really, really hot, and then uh, it's where they converted the railroad into trails that you can ride on. And then you get in these tunnels, and they're nice and cool. Yes. Yeah. Well, we had, we had our two little dogs, and my son, he was riding behind me in this carrier, you know, I'm, I'm taking him, and my wife and daughter are way back there. I was like, hey, get out and go hide in the little alcove. When she comes around, you can jump out and get her, you know. Uh, <laughs> but, so... When he does that, one of the dogs just went boom, 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 fell out. We gotta get her back and put her in there. But they weren't. They were focused on the end, and they didn't see him. And yes, it was quite humorous. He's six, so he loves. You. He's six, not sick. He's six. He likes to do that, you know, to to get one over on mommy and and on sissy. But they're. The, the light that we have, he said that we are to let our light so shine before men that they may see our good works and glorify Amen. our Father Amen. in heaven. That even though we're walking through the valley of the shadow of death, and we do see that end goal, that he is the finish line, the author and finish of our faith, that we're running that race of patience towards him, it is in those moments and those times and things that we go through that we're able to shed light into situations and circumstances Amen. and to help people and encourage them. Yes, yesterday it was very difficult to be an encourager. You know, I I wanted to ride the bike. You know, I had my daughter and my nephew, and I had my daughter on the back of the big one, and, and my nephew was on the smaller one. Yeah. So we were going to swap, and then I was going to ride. Uh, there was a trail. I was like, let me just go up this trail and check it out. My daughter was like, well, what am I supposed to do? I was like, just ride the bike, and I'll just wait right here. You know? And then and then it broke, and you know. All this worldly anxiety that we yeah. pile up on ourselves. In, in that moment, I, I could have released it. And You're just right. Been like, you know. Yeah. Yep. This is how awesome God is. It, it's. He said, "There's never more temptation put upon us than we can bear." Yeah. With right. the temptation, He'll make a way of escape. That's, that's right. When when you feel that, I mean, these are two individuals that I love. My, my daughter and my nephew. I've been. I, I was there when both of them were born. I mean, they're 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 wonderful. I, I would want to hurt them because of pride or something that made me upset. You know, and I humorously said some things earlier because trying to get the bike running, the clutch handle's not there. My nephew could row the other one, so I had to, like, get it going and then click it real quick, and I was like, yeah. yes, jump on, let's go, yeah. you know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we, we did that, we got it, and, but... My nephew couldn't get the other one running, so he's standing there. And he's like, well, what am I so I can't get it going? And we showed him, and then I had to do it again. Got it running, holding the clutch cable yeah. with my hand, trying to get it, put it in gear. and So my nephew just goes on, and my daughter's like, well, you should just call Mommy. And Mommy needs to just come and pick us up. Oh, boy. We're in the middle, and I was like, just start walking, and I'm going <laughs> to fix this. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> pride swells up inside us. Yeah. Yeah. And pride goes before fall. Yeah. Yeah. And so I was <laughs> made up excuses later, you know, it'd be really hard for her to load the bike and and I apologized to my daughter. I was like, Hey, daddy was upset. I wanted to get this running. But about four or five tries and <laughs> I drove by her, I was like, quick, jump on! Yeah. <laughs> Drive by pickup, and then she, we went on. The, the blessings that are around us, though, and, and what means the most to us are the things that sometimes we lose sight of because we're yes, so fixated on something. My mom used to call me sidetracked, and my brother was one track. 
you know, <laughs> something that he wanted, he had to do it. Me, I was like, look, squirrel, you know. <laughs> but, but it was awesome to see, you know, the love and the compassion and the sincerity and the, you know, he had a drive about doing things that I was just lacking. It's a good name too, his name is Jeremy, so. Yeah. It is, it's still good. The, <laughs> it is, he's the one, yes. <laughs> But to see the things, though, that I would like for him to witness, you know, the, the blessings that are around him. And I know God's still dealing with them. But I remember growing up and the pain that I caused him, you know, the, the, the opportunities. I was 10 years older than him. I took care of him a lot. And I had opportunities. He says that, you know, that we're to press towards the mark. Right. The high calling That's of right. Christ Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. That we're to leave those things aside. The, the, he said that the sin, the weight that does such easily beset us in, in 12, or Hebrews 12, the things that are holding us bound down. Because these works are not in and of ourselves. That's They're right. of the Lord. And he gives us the strength. Yeah. Amen? Yep. As I've been going through Ephesians, though, there's been some amazing things. Like uh, this morning, I, I get to preach, and we're looking through three Chapter 3, 4, 5, and then on the 6. If you get a chance to read them together, it's awesome. Because he puts this task to us of uh, who we're supposed to be, that there's a gift that's given to us. Absolutely. And, and these blessings, his spirit within us, the abilities that we have. And, you know, you, you can't read 3, 4, 5, and 6. And, well, you could. I mean, it'd just be the whole sermon. I'll just keep reading them all, and then eventually we'll go and you know, comment on every section, and I hope the brought at dinner or maybe breakfast. <laughs> yeah. but, but so I just took little snapshots, but there was, I really wanted to, to read this part and it's uh, Ephesians chapter five. We're going to start in verse six. But as you look, there's, there's ways that he calls us to be that, that we're no longer the old men, that we're a new creature in Christ Jesus, that yeah. old things pass away. Uh, the, the ways that we used to be alienated from the truth of God. So blinded by uh, selfishness and pride and all these things that we missed out on the love and the blessings and all the stuff that was around us. He said now uh, that, that it's in that very part, of, I even had this uh, highlighted where he says that we're to uh, anger and sin not. It, yeah. You know, that we're not to grieve the Holy Spirit, that we're to be kind to one another, that we're to put away lying and uh, that angering and sin not, I mean, Yes, I was infuriated. I yeah. just fixed that. I wanted to ride the bike. The sin was missing the mark of that moment, the place where God wants us to be. In that instant, the blessings and the gifts that he's trying to instill inside of us to be a conduit to overflow to the people around us. Right. I would have missed it if I would have allowed that Amen. anger to boil up to the point that mm -hmm. I said something that would hurt that young man or my daughter. Let's pray as we get the word. Yeah. Father God, edify us, encourage us, dear Lord. I pray, dear Lord, that you'll open up and expound to us in a deep understanding. Dear God, you know our innermost needs. You know the things that we go through, our, our struggles. Dear God, you know us better than we know ourselves. And I pray right now, dear God, that you'll meet our needs. Dear God, that you'll speak to us and help us, dear God, to overflow with the spirit inside of us. Dear Lord, that no matter what's going on around us, dear Lord, that you'll reveal the truth to us so that we can walk in your will. I pray, dear God, that you use me this evening, the Lord, as a willing vessel. Dear God, that you'll touch my lips with your coals of fire that may be found worthy to present your word to your people. I would thank you, Lord. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We're going to be in uh, verse 6, <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 6. It says, and I love because Sam had just mentioned it. It says, let no man deceive you with vain words. Yeah. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God unto the children of disobedience. Mm -hmm. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. Yeah. For ye were sometimes darkness, but... Now, are ye light in the Lord? Walk as children of the light. Mm -hmm. Yes. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And having no fellowship with 
the unfruitful works of darkness, Amen. but rather reprove them. I love that, reprove. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done unto them in secret, of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore, he saith, awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what is the will of the Lord is. Do you know what the will of the Lord is? So, every every day, yeah, I'm, I'm going to work. You, you know work's a curse, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, somebody's like, yeah, I get to go to work today. I mean, there might be some days, but seriously, it, it is. It's by the sweat of our brow that we make our bread. Absolutely. It's something we just, I don't have to go to work. I'm going, okay, uh, tomorrow I don't have to go to work. Woo-hoo. So, but when I'm going, I, I have to remind myself, this is a day that the Lord has made. That's right. I shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Mm-hmm. The rejoicing aspect of that gives us the ability to shine the light. Uh, when when they, uh, the Israelites had been living uh, far from God, and then they found the Word of God, and they're reading it. Uh, Nehemiah sitting up there, and they're trying to expound it to them to get them to understand. And they're like, oh my goodness, we are so not doing that. <laughs> we need to walk in the We are so far from God. They were so regretful in their hearts. And he says, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. If you can put that in your heart, this is how we redeem. This is how we turn things. Uh, if you think about like a restoration project, we turn things that were old into something that is new. Right. right? It's by the Lord working through us. Amen. But the works that he gives us shines out of us in, in joy. I mean, who would want to go with you? Oh, let's go to church. You know, there's, there's people there that talk about me all the time. And, oh, my goodness, that one person, I, I, they must eat beans every night, and I sit right behind them. <laughs> you know, I mean, would you, would you want to go with me if I'm just going on and droning about how awful it is? And No. The joy of the Lord is our strength. If we're going to restore, then we have to restore in a sense with joy. And yes, you've got to be honest about it. Because the world sees that. The the, the deceitful people, the ones that that are out there that are just speaking lies or making up their own doctrines. Yeah, we had a couple of them come to the church a few times. When I was really young in the Lord, I was like, oh, I never saw that like that, you know. But now he says, those that are unwise ask for wisdom. God gives it to us. Amen. He gives us a discerning heart. So when we hear that deceit, we understand that we're like, nah, nah, that's not, that has no part of my life. I don't need to, to be that. But yeah, you don't kick him up. I mean, you guys had dinner with him, right? I mean, he, he wasn't, he's not with the coon and dog. He's not, right? No. <laughs> yeah. You get that. Um, You're on tape. I, I mean, okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Edit. That was before we recorded, wasn't it? <laughs> Erase that part. No, so... To anger and sin not, though, in that you have the ability to reprove somebody. Yeah. Uh, remember when that, that um, the, there was a, a name, or a gentleman, I can't remember, I think it was, um, it was like he was, uh, I wish I could remember his name, Acts chapter 13. He's pretending like he is a, a you know, devout follower, and, and you know, so, uh, so they call him out on, on his, his, his wrongdoings, you know, and he's like, He's watching them, the disciples, perform these miracles. And he's like, I, I want that. Hey, I'll give you some money. Can I get some of that yeah. power from you? Yeah. To what, to what end? To, to what means? You know? So, so guy was blinded, right? Yeah. I believe later on he became a follower. I, I believe, I don't know, I'll ask him when I get there. Or I probably won't remember, but... Yeah. But I think, though, that he's, he was serving the Lord after that, after seeing the miracles of God. When, when there's things that go on inside of our lives, uh, bar Jesus, that's his, that's his, 
So when there's things that go on in our lives that we do that uh, we know are people are trying to take advantage of us, it tells us to pray for those that despitefully right. use us. Amen. amen. Vengeance is mine, thus Say saith the Lord. Yes, I amen. will recompense. Yeah. My my daughter is is twelve now, and you know, girls are different. <laughs> but so I know what teenage boys are like, and they and 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 I you know I we were driving. We had about an hour from our house to Walton's when we went yesterday, and we're trying to converse with her, and you know she's talking about some pretty. Stuff I did. I wish I, I couldn't leave. I was in the truck. I was driving, right? <laughs> but so so in this conversation, though, I I know that the pridefulness of being a dad swells up. Oh, I'll take care of them boys, and you know, hey boys, come over here. I'm I'm cleaning all of my guns in this fresh kill that I have. You know, I don't something to intimidate them. I don't know. Yeah. But how much more does my heavenly Father love me? Right. Amen. Amen. Uh, I mean. He, he loves us and protects us, and he knows us better than we know ourselves. We want vengeance for us. Amen. If somebody does us wrong. Like, yeah, you, yeah. you know, people sitting there and just watching me do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I got, I got some there. Like, yeah. 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 <laughs> but, but we want the vengeance for ourselves because Amen. it makes us feel good. You know? Yeah. It's pride. Amen. But, but God makes a way that the very thing he... The table that he prepares for us in the presence of yeah, our enemies, amen. the blessings yes. that he's pouring out, the valley of the shadow of death that we're walking through, his rod and his staff, his spirit and his word, they're guiding us. And amen. while they're yeah. guiding us, the light's shining in us, and people see that, and they're like, I'm not doing so good. I should probably stop talking about you behind your back. Or, <laughs> or they'll come to you and uh, ask for your forgiveness of something you didn't even know. I'm so sorry what I did with your toothbrush last time I was over at your house. Yeah. Like, what? <laughs> Whatever it is, yeah. God's touched their heart, though. Yeah. And why? Because you let your light shine. Amen. Because yeah. you were being true and honest and sincere. Are we perfect? No. We make mistakes. Yes. Right. Humbleness, though, is not groveling and you know, bowing. Oh, I'm yeah. so sorry I did that, you know. Humbleness is being. Moses said that I'm the most humble man that's ever lived. <laughs> this sounds like an oxymoron, right? <laughs> no, humbleness is being obedient to God. That's right. it. Bottom line. Yeah. He knows better. His ways are higher than our ways. Amen. It's His will, not our will. So when they are speaking lies, or when they are coming against us, or when they are trying to hurt us, yeah. even though we want something done, even though we want the Justification. He wants us to restore. Amen. He wants us to to touch their hearts, to to be that light. Yes. In Galatians two twenty, it's, it's one of my favorite scriptures. It says, "I am crucified with Christ." That means all my pridefulness, my my selfishness, my intentions, me. It's crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives yes. in me. Amen. And the life that I now live yes. in yes. Yes. the flesh. I live by the yes, faith yes, of the Son of God who called me and gave himself for me. Mm -hmm. It means that even though I want vengeance for myself, or I'm not in the restoration mood, I'm more in the demolition mood, you know. Yeah. It's God within us that will allow us and restrain us. Because in my flesh, I know what it's capable of. And I know how wicked it can be. Amen. And I know what it can do. And I don't want that. I don't want there to be an instant of uh, because I was so upset that I said something that ruined my relationship with my son. Or yes. praise God, uh, in, in a couple weeks I'll be married for twenty years. Mm -hmm. Thunk, right? Yeah, yeah. But in that, they, there's like I could ruin all that in one moment. Amen. Yeah, that's right. Action, deed, speech. But here's how awesome God is. I I am crucified with Christ. But I live, like, the best life, hands down, ever, I've ever had. This is life. It's life more abundant. Amen. This is joy. Yes, amen. Unspeakable, full of his glory. So because of that, we are able to walk in truth. That the life that now we live in the flesh, he's got it. That's right. I don't have to be paranoid and worried about what I'm going to say. I mean, yesterday, yes, at first I felt like I was walking on eggshells. 
there's all these people that have had years of conflict and you just want to be a peacemaker or you you don't want your children in that situation and they were when we got there they were already gone they were supposed to have waited for us but they all left and we're like oh man this is a little awkward her uncle's there so we hung out with him and and so my wife went on her own to the graveyard and I stayed there with the kids and with her uncle. And it was a divine appointment yeah. just to talk with him. He lost his wife a few years ago. And he's been going through a lot of stuff. And we talked about the craziness that's going on right now in our world. I mean, it's like... Yeah, amen. And I don't know where his relationship is with God, but I know in that moment you could discern his heart. And, and, and there was pain and concern and anxiety and confusion. But that's the way the rest of the world is. Amen. Right? So I didn't have to worry about what I was going to say. Because I knew God... Uh, yes, sometimes we say stuff that we're like, ah, it's like toothpaste. I've seen that before. I think that it is kid's day. Yeah. You squeeze it, you can't put it back in, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah, that's you know, fact. Once the words are out, they're out there. That's fact. That's right. Yeah, and then you know why they did what they did with the toothbrush. No. So <laughs> then you're like, God, I, I shouldn't I shouldn't say that. I wish I wouldn't have said that. But I know that he'll restrain my heart, so I do not have to be fearful. Yeah. God has not given us a spirit of fear, yeah, but of right. power, yeah, love, and a sound amen. mind. Amen. Yes, yeah. amen. Praise him for that. Yes. Because that's usually when the worst battle between your ears erupt. Is when you're faced with somebody that you're trying to talk rationally to but they're in a yeah. bitter hateful mood or they're so judgmental of you and you can just feel that anger coming from them but god's got you in their presence yeah mm -hmm. amen but he speaks peace to the storm yes it's like mm -hmm. the disciples on the ship right and they're like is that a ghost who's that i mean there's somebody walking on the water out there and it was jesus he calmed the storm when he got on board he, we sometimes feel like he's a far, he's far away from us in those moments, whenever it's chaotic and confusing and it's painful and it's, it's hurting. But it's right then when you can see him, and you just ask him. And like Peter, he walked out, and Jesus was instantly right there when he called for him, while Peter was drowning in the midst of the waters. It, I praise him because. Clarity of thought and to be able to have joy Amen. and happiness. Amen. Yeah. I mean, Amen. Yeah. There's a lot of other things that you know the, the world has to offer us, but give me that any day. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because without having yes. true yes. joy, yeah. true peace, and true happiness, how you can appreciate anything. Sure. Amen. Let, uh, uh, not stuff and things, but what about the people in your life that Amen. you love so much? I, one thing that her uncle said to me, because he was watching my kids play, and they said, it's, it's them that I'm really concerned about. You know? Yes, I, yes, I, I am. And, and yes, the flesh is, ah, you know, freaking out all the time. But the Spirit of God calms that. Amen. And, and he gives us an understanding that he, just like he protects us and he'll lead us, he'll be with them. Amen. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, absolutely. If, if you go back in history and you look at the moral decay decade after decade after decade of this, just this nation. Amen. And not the world, but just here. You'll see them just slowly pulling the fabric out. Amen. The, the very thread that holds us together. Amen. God that had stitched right. us, that yeah. made this beautiful uh, ability. Like if you've ever seen... Um, a tapestry, you know, on the front, it's amazing, but behind it, ugh, I mean, it looks like somebody just threw up thread everywhere. Yeah. And they're behind the scenes trying amen. to pull God out of that. A right? Amen. And the whole time they're doing it, it's starting to fall apart. Amen. So you have young men that are craving respect and, and encouragement and leadership that are just losing their minds and doing horrible, awful things. Yeah. Amen. I mean, the, the, the majority of this, these shootings that have had happened lately, they're young 18-year-old men. So influential. They've allowed somebody to deceitfully talk to them or have gone on and yeah. watched something. I don't know, but I know this. 
you've got to put the thread back in. Amen. It will continue to fall apart. Amen. That's a fact. And, and we know that's going to happen. Yeah. This morning we were, we were talking about that when the enemy comes in like a flood, that the right. Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against you. Right. The enemy's coming in like a flood. Praise God. This is the latter rain. Yeah. Yeah. God's the yeah. standard, the spirit of the Lord is lifting that up inside of you. Amen. It's, yes. it's here. Yes. It's, it's his spirit living and dwelling within you. We, we then looked at the armor of God, that every facet of it is Jesus. Every part. <laughs> he is the truth that I, I'm able to know in those moments when I am so confused. He is the, 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 the shouting of the gospel. We're, we're standing firm on the rock. We have wrapped our feet on the rock. Amen. We know that his word is true, and that's what we're standing in. Yeah. <laughs> he is our, our righteousness. He, he that knew no sin became sin, so we might become the righteousness Amen. of God. Yes. His light gleaming and beaming off of us. <laughs> he is the author and finisher of our faith. He is the shield that quenches all those <clears throat> fiery darts, the people that are speaking against us, the doubt and anxiety that keeps coming yes, against us. Yes, yes, yes. He is my salvation. <laughs> His name literally means God saves. Yes, right. And he is the offensive weapon in my spiritual armor. Mm -hmm. The sword, the word of God. <laughs> These are the gifts the spirit indwells within us. Paul gave the Ephesians a metaphor as God spoke to his heart, mm -hmm. illustrating like what the Roman soldiers would have been like. He, he's like, you think they're tough? No, think about your armor bearer. Dawning it on you every day. Yeah. Trying to give them an understanding of who they are in Christ. So that when you're so focused on the problem, when you're so focused on the pain that you don't have to be, that you're reminded because his light's shining off of you. You've got that peace in your mind. You know that it's going to be okay. When, when you're faced with these problems, you're able to reprove them instead of hurt the people that you're trying to help. Because when he said, like, if you think about the armor, it's well, like warrior outfit, right? That's what you think of. But really, your feet, what you're standing <coughs> on. Because when he talks in Ephesians, he starts out saying that stand firm. And having done all, to stand. <laughs> and our feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of Amen. peace. So he speaks peace into our hearts in the midst of the problems. So that when we're in those problems, he's able to, through the Spirit, overflow from us and calm the hearts of those that are around us. You ever notice that? That when you're, you go to somebody's house and uh, they love the Lord. And you, know, I mean, you don't have to look at the decorations and stuff, but I mean, you just feel this peace when you go Amen. in there. Yeah. It's like here. Yeah. Amen. You just feel the peace of God. This is what we bring with us because we Amen. prepare, right. we read, we spend time with Him. Amen. I'm, I'm going to encourage you. Read through Ephesians or, or listen to it. But think about the gift that He's given us, the ability of His Spirit within us that helps us so that when we're in the midst of whatever the situation is, that we're able to do the right thing. Yes. Not putting on the facade in front. <laughs> like, yeah. how art thou, brother? Yeah. Yeah. No, you're being... For real, yeah, right? That's right? You're being who you are yeah. now. Mm -hmm. He goes through a litany of things that you shouldn't do. Because people see you. They see what you're doing sometimes. And when I, I am not perfect, right? We all make mistakes. Amen. But there'll be that thing in the back of their brain while you're trying to talk. And it's just gnawing at them because they're like, oh, I heard this rumor about that person. And now they're up there trying to deliver the gospel. Come to me. Talk to me. I'd be more than happy to tell you anything. Yeah. Maybe it's true. I don't know. I don't know what it is. But whatever it is, that, that's why he doesn't want us to be backbiters. That's why he wants us to walk right. Um, we're going to try to have our nerf battles coming up. But with all this stuff going on. Bible says if the meat I eat offends my brother, I shouldn't eat it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. There's other ways that we can reach him, so we just don't do that right now. Maybe later on. Okay. Absolutely. absolutely. God's got a plan, though. You know. It's, it's okay. It's yeah. okay. Whatever it is. Absolutely. 
but it's as he leads us. Yes. And that's the way we need to respond. Amen. Um, I, w- I want you to, to, to pray for us, uh, for each other, our churches in general, all the body. Amen. But when you do lift my family eye up in your prayers, there's some stuff that I see my kids go through, and I, I know what to do. And I am the one that gets in the way. Yeah. Because I know that God can do it. Amen. So I want him to move through them. They, they're amazing. I mean, they're so gifted and talented and filled with love. And I know my wife and I, we can, we can be obedient to God and we can help them. But I haven't experienced the things that they go through now. Amen. That's a fact. And this is totally different. Yeah. Amen. I was, we were talking about some stuff the other day, and my son's commenting on it. I mean, stuff that they shouldn't be learning in school. That's a fact. Amen. It's everywhere. Amen. Yeah. I know that God's got me. So I just got to practice what I preach. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Amen. And my wife says it all the time. All right, preacher. Yeah. That that lady, when she addressed you, she said, Preacher, you're lying, preacher. And it's like it's not a good word when they say that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yes, it's it's true. We have to practice what we preach. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Let's all say. I, I want to. I feel encouraged. We're gonna have a special prayer. Um, 